It's the last sports night of 2022 and we're closing the year with the highlights of an outdoor hockey doubleheader. Plus the boys basketball team heading into the conference season. Sports night is next. Hello everyone, welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Yund. Howie Shapiro not able to make it tonight, but a short show anyway. Only have a couple pieces of video to show you. We will get you as caught up as we can, and then we are going to take uh, the final week of the, the year off and be back uh, just after the new year. We start with the boys hockey team. Tough task taking on fifth ranked Maple Grove on the road last Thursday. Uh, they were heavily outshot, but uh, Austin Durkop kept them in the game. 46 saves and a respectable 4-0 loss at the hands of a very good uh, Maple Grove hockey team. It's certainly uh, been much more lopsided than that in the past. Well, the boys and girls hockey programs hosted a special day of events on Saturday at the CTN Outdoor Rink calling it Hockey Day Coon Rapids. When you have a facility this cool, you need to show it off, and they had perfect weather for the fans who got to enjoy hot cocoa and s'mores by the bonfire while watching a classic border battle against Anoka. For the boys, they saw the 0-4 Tornadoes as a perfect opportunity to stop their three-game skid. Cardinals took a penalty less than a minute in, but they forced a turnover, get a shorthanded two-on-one. Ben Kish with a perfect dish. Caden Alfin with the finish, third goal of the season for the sophomore. Anoka answered 30 seconds later, but the Cardinals controlled the rest of the way. Draw on the offensive end, Puck finds Tyler Bars in this high slot. He's not afraid to take the backhand and an absolute laser to the top shelf. Put the Cardinals back in front. They added two more before the first intermission. Beautiful power play goal, Eli Bowden to Ben Kish for the amazing tip. Cardinals go to the locker room up four to one. Cardinals had control of the puck most of the game. They only get one more past the keeper and it's Tyler Barsness. Another beauty of a backhand. Cardinals dominant in a 5-1 victory that was desperately needed. After a three game. Oh, there was a save by Durkop there at the end. Uh, a, a win they desperately needed after losing three in a row and a chance uh, now to turn it around and win three straight because they've got a couple of beatable opponents uh, on the schedule this week. On Tuesday, they take on uh, St. Paul or South St. Paul and on Thursday, they uh, face Eastridge. Girls hockey team, huge, huge win last Tuesday. Centennial Spring Lake Park made its way into the top 10 rankings. And then the Bluebirds got some revenge. They came from behind and it got a 4-3 overtime winner. Game winning goal by Kylie Scott in the extra session. Lily McKenzie had a pair of goals, including the one late in the third that helped them tie it to force it to overtime. That is a huge, huge win for this team. It puts them at six and four and their overtime record through 10 games is two and three five overtime games. Half of their games have gone to an extra section. Well, the Bluebirds actually took the ice first at the outdoor event on Saturday, also hosting Anoka. CPCR was looking for a three game win streak for the first time this season. They weren't going to overlook the tornadoes, but they knew if they played their game, the one six and one Anoka squad wouldn't be able to keep up. Pretty much everything went according to plan, including temps in the high teens and a light snowfall that made it feel like watching hockey in a snow globe. Bluebirds start quickly. A little backhand from Cam Singh doesn't go. Put the rebound out front. Lily McKenzie pokes at home. Just the start of a big night for her. Midway through the first Bluebirds power play. Kylie S. Wiegand with the shot from the point. McKenzie rings the rebound off the post, but Cam Singh there to finish into a wide open net. Still in the first, Lily McKenzie weaving down the left wing, finishes with a beautiful snipe shot, top shelf, short side. Bluebirds up 3-0 after one. CPCR outshot Anoka 38-8 in the game, and Lily McKenzie just keeps cashing in. She digs a rebound out, and that's the power play goal in the second period. That completes her hat trick and she wasn't quite done. Final seconds of the game, Oswegan with a shot from the point. Olsen makes a stop. Guess who's there to jam in the rebound. Lily McKenzie gets her fourth of the game. Bluebirds win 5-0. 
McKenzie had four goals and an assist, so factored into all five goals in the 5 nothing shootout. But just eight shots against for Anoka. Six of them were in the first period, two in the second, none in the third. That is amazing team defense. Uh, Maddie Wastrel getting her second shutout of the season. Road gets much, much more difficult for the Bluebirds moving forward. They are at a very highly ranked Maple Grove squad on Tuesday. Then they have some time off and they will prepare to try to uh, defend their championship of the Kaposia Classic. They start that holiday tournament next Monday against Holy Angels at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, wrestling team, a couple of events last week on Tuesday. They took on Elk River and Two Rivers, uh, losing both by the same 46-36 score. That was actually last Thursday. Um, or Friday even, if I figure it all out in my head, uh, drops the Cardinals to two and six on the season. On Saturday, they were in Monticello. Most of the team wrestling at the JV level where they could get a little bit uh, tighter competition. Uh, just four guys entered as in the varsity team. So a respectable 14th place out of the 19 teams that were there. Three guys uh, are, are place winners. Uh, Burdenstein in fifth place at 113. Hunter Allen and he, uh, Hayden Skillings uh, both took fourth place in their respective uh, weight classes. This week, the team is off, and then they leave on Monday for Orlando, Florida, where they'll get a holiday tournament of their own and also go see Universal, maybe a little Disney World, uh, and they will be back next Friday. Then they will resume their dual meet schedule after the new year at Blaine on Thursday the 5th. Gymnastics team took on Park Center last week and their score dropped a bit. Uh, this would be their new low score of the season, but uh, some girls doing some decent things, a couple of third place finishes, uh, including Ada Drummy in third place in the all-around. Uh, Cecilia Aurelli was fourth place in the all-around for the Cardinals. They are at uh, Anoka on Thursday, and then they will have the Princeton invite on Saturday, January 7th. So they have a while off for the holidays. Unfortunately, things didn't work out for us to get together with the Nordic ski team last week. We're hoping to do so in the very near future. Um, I know they have uh, winter camp coming up next week and they are hopefully going to have perfect weather for it. Uh, last week, the end of the week, which is when they raced, uh, turned out to be decent weather for skiing and some good numbers put up by the Cardinals, both boys and girls finished second place at uh, the Northwest Suburban Conference Classic over at Elm Creek. Aaron Casey, first place overall for the Cardinal boys. Bauer finished ninth place in, and Lachlan Demmer in 10th. Peyton Martinick right behind him in 11th. So three of the top 10, four of the top 11 for the Cardinals. Borns rounded out the scorers in 26th place. On the girls' side, also a second place finish uh, with Stella Bone finishing eighth, Ruby Demmer in 13th, Megan Fuller was 21st, Erickson 22nd, Martinick 23rd, and uh, Burnt in 24th. How's that for grouping? 21st through 24th place. Now, the Nordic teams are at Highland on Wednesday this week and then at Elm Creek uh, next Tuesday before they leave for their winter camp, I believe, middle of next week. Alpine ski team finally gets to hit the slopes for the first time in competition this week at, at uh, Wild Mountain on Tuesday. They're then back in action on Thursday the 5th for race two. That one's also at Wild Mountain. Boys basketball team had a rough time last week as they opened their conference schedule with two very tough opponents. On Tuesday, the Cardinals hosted Robbinsdale Armstrong. The Falcons won the matchup last year by a single point, and it looked like this year would be another battle to the buzzer. But looks can be deceiving. The mark, the Cardinals start the way they wanted to. Defense turning into offense. Good pressure on the ball. Forces the turnover. Leads to a breakaway for Kaijan Cummings. Coleman, Cardinals on the board first. But it's the Falcons that find a rhythm early. Seth Newburn behind the defense. Throws down a dunk. Newburn had 12 of his game high 21 
in the first half. Falcons had runs of 9-0, 13-0, and 8-0 that helped them build their lead as large as 24 points in the first half. Cardinals got a couple of three-pointers late in the first half to close the gap a bit, but still they trailed 38-20 going to the break. Armstrong looking to pick up where they left off in the second, but this miss turns into a transition basket for the Cardinals. Jerry Freeman pulling up for the little floater. But the Falcons never let their lead get threatened. Desmond Ware making a deposit off the bank. He was one of three Armstrong scorers in double digits. Falcons got the lead as high as 30 points in the second half. Acrobatic bucket right here for Newborn. Helps his team soar to the 72-52 victory. After another win over Blaine on Thursday, the Falcons made it into the top 10 rankings and are now ranked uh, 7 in 4A. So a quality club but uh, a very disappointing loss, not so much in the opponent they lost to, but in the fashion in which it happened. And it only got more difficult because on Thursday, they traveled to take on number one ranked and defending state champion Park Center, and the Pirates showed why they are so heavily ranked. Kaijan had a bounce back game, put up 21 with six boards. Jackson Hetwer having his best game of the season with a 17 point effort. Young added eight and Jones and Freeman had seven and six respectively, but Cardinals about 39 points shy of the Pirates in that one. Cardinals host St. Francis on Tuesday, and then they will be off until next Friday when they take on Chisago Lakes. Girls basketball team, same schedule, similar results. On Tuesday, they took on Armstrong, lost to the Falcons 63-38. to Kylie Beerman, uh, a breakout game for her with 20 points and three boards, and Green contributed 11 points, but behind that, just three girls with two points each. On Thursday, similar score, 61-32, the loss at the hands of Park Center. Casey Beck led the way with 11 points. Kaylin Green had six, Bierman had five, and Tengwall added three. They fall to 0-6 on the season. They will host, host Duluth, Duluth East next Tuesday, so they are off this week. And then they are at Minneapolis Washburn next Friday. I certainly hope the Cardinals can find a couple of victories this year. But if they only get one, let it be next Friday against the Washburn Millers. But that is going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. And again, the final show uh, of 2022. We're going to be off next uh, week and back sometime shortly after the new year. There is a look at the coverage we have coming up. Boys basketball against St. Francis on Tuesday, boys hockey against Eastridge on Thursday, and gymnastics against Anoka on Thursday as well. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. We hope everyone has a happy and safe holiday and new year. We'll see you in 2023.